In this video, we're going to look generally at the transaction and payment processing services industry, which has seen a lot of collapsing stock prices across the industry. There are approximately 80 companies in this industry. We're going to focus on six of the more premier stocks in the industry, starting with WEX. You can see these stocks became very highly valued in the period 2017, 18 through 20. And then they had the stock price correction. If we move on to PayPal Holdings, one of the you know better known names in the industry, you can see the massive overvaluation and the stock price eventually collapsing back to intrinsic value. We look at Jack Henry, one of the smaller companies in this industry. It's also had a price correction, but it's held up better than most. But the whole industry is going through these price corrections. Global payments, you know, same thing. We saw the stock price get very highly valued in 2019 and 20, and most of the correction occurred, you know, since the um, collapse of SVB and others. But the point is, these stocks were overvalued before they began to correct. Fleet Core Technologies, very similarly, has seen a declining stock price over the many years. So those are five of the more prominent companies in the industry. We'll be featuring Fidelity National throughout this video. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the fundamental analyzer software tool. Welcome again to another one of our videos where we're going to kind of take a look at the transaction and payment processing industry here, an industry that's seen their stock prices really dropping precipitously over the last several years. You know, a lot of that had to do with the fact that, you know, we've had some issues going on in banking and so on, and there's all kind of other reasons. In fact, in this video with cooperation of James Long at the bottom of the video, you'll see a link to an article that we produced on Fidelity National Information. It's the one that we're featuring out of this group. Not necessarily the one we like the best, but one that we're featuring because there are many lessons in value investing here to be had. So I want to thank James Long for his work. Follow the link at the bottom and you can read the article on a more in-depth research of Fidelity National and how you can utilize the FastGraphs Fundamental Analyzer software tool to research a stock. But let's go ahead and get into Fidelity National and let's talk about this a little bit. A couple of things I want to point out is that the orange line on the graph, as most of you I think who follow our channel know, represents the intrinsic value or fair value of the business. Okay, and it also shows the operating history of the business. I've taken stock prices off the graph. This has been a very consistent grower, but since the word pay acquisition that I mentioned briefly, the company's growth has slowed dramatically. So if I look at this over the last six or seven years or so, we can see the company's had no growth, very, very small, almost zero, 0.27% per year. But they're divesting the word play acquisition, and that's going to hopefully make them a more steady grower, but still not a very fast grower. But I also want to point out that stock price follows earnings in the long run. And the stock got very, very highly valued here. And when a stock price gets very highly valued like that for any company, all it takes is a catalyst to bring it back to reality. Now, if I look at the, you know, just look at the valuation drop here, the total drop of the stock has been 64% from its peak in April of 2021 to currently. But if we look at it from the standpoint of the impact that valuation had on this, what we see is almost 40% of that drop was simply a function of the stock was being overvalued. The rest of the drop is simply a function of the market overshooting that, which it tends to do it's, you know, historically. And the reality of it is the stock price will, will rise and fall as it has many other times in the past and it becomes undervalued, there's a 20-some percent drop, but we always see this reversion to the mean. So we think these stocks provide a very great margin of safety and they're very, very undervalued. But let's look at it through the lens of other metrics. Now, because of the word play acquisition that they're divesting, there's going to be a significant amount of goodwill charges against this company. So when you look at gap earnings, which includes non-recurring charges, non-cash charges, we see negative earnings of almost $27 a share based on some goodwill impairment charges. But if we look at it from more from a standpoint of operating, which is what the operating earnings I previously showed, cash flow is a good example. The company has generated good cash. Remember that acquisition and impairment charges don't affect the cash or the cash flow of the company. We can see that they were overvalued based on cash flow. 
cash flow is going to drop a little bit. We also see that the dividend, which is 3.81% right now, is extremely well covered by operating cash flow. And then, like I like to say, the acid test, we also see free cash flow coverage is very, very strong. So I feel like the 3.81% dividend is very safe, regardless of the fact that growth may be slowing a bit. Another way to look at this is another form of almost a form of cash flow. That's earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So that's earnings before taking the goodwill charges and so on. We're seeing a, a much more steady result, but I want you to also see how visibly you can see the overvaluation that existed and how dangerous that was. This was the COVID flash crash and the quick recovery. Now we had, you know, some of the issues that we'll be talking about that we talk about in the article that um, you can find the link to at the bottom of this video. But we see that the stocks now have become very, very undervalued relative to their future growth based on EBITDA. And then finally, price to sales, which we talk about in that article. Their normal price to sales has been about 2.17. They're currently trading at 2.25 times sales, which again gives us a slight margin of safety. But you can see how overvalued the stock was, even based on a price to sales basis. So these are just some other metrics that we're looking at. Looking at the future in the article, we tried to be conservative here. And so we picked a normal price to sales of about 2.97 and said, assuming the company earns what is expected, which is only a 3% growth rate, so a very modest growth rate, you're looking at making over 19% a year annualized on this company with a, almost a 4% dividend that has been growing. This company has been a powerful performer historically, and it's you know almost lockstep with the market but it's generated significantly more dividend income. We, you know, we cover that also extensively in the article. But if you look at this stock from the standpoint going back to the operating earnings and look at the stock from you know, when they made the, the word pay acquisition, the stock was growing and was generating a very high rate of return. And it definitely was outperforming the stock market here. The word play acquisition has caused them some problems. They are now divesting that. The stock has become very, very inexpensive. It's a new game, if you will, in town. And the reality of it is, you know, performance, and like I like to say all the time, is measuring performance without simultaneously measuring valuation is a job half done. This company has, you know, is currently significantly undervalued, while the overall market, I believe, remains overvalued. This thing has compounded dividends at over 24% a year on average. I don't know what the dividend record is going to be going forward, but with all the cash flows they have, the free cash flow they have, I believe the dividend is well protected and likely to continue to grow. We just have to see what the rate of that's going to be. Another advantage of investing with the FastGraph Fundamental Research Tool is that you can really research a stock extensively. So these graphs you know, give us a really good indication of where the stock might be going. The analyst scorecard helps us determine how accurate the estimates have been. So we get a nice starting point here, and I call it the, a very important first step in the research process. But FastGraph also facilitates going to other research services. And, you know, I subscribe to other research services. For example, I subscribe to Morningstar. You have to be a subscriber to get to some of these. You get some information from them without being a subscriber. But you generally have to be a subscriber if you're going to be able to participate. Now, I want you to notice that Morningstar gives FIS a five-star rating. And what that means is they call it the five-star price is 58. The stock is actually below that at under $55 a share right now. They give it a fair value of 83. And they talk about the fact that they plan to undo its merger with World Pay. That's a, that's a mouthful for me, unfortunately. But anyway, the world play acquisition is going to be divested, and they expect that that's going to, you know, allow them to get back to a more stable growth rate going forward. Maybe not as high, but more stable. Okay, so that makes this stock look very, very interesting at this level. You also have other external links you can go to. You can get estimates from other sources such as Yahoo and Zacks if you're a subscriber to those. But the idea here is to research the stock deeper and faster. FastGraphs also gives you the financial information. You can go into the financial statements and review the income statements, the balance sheets, and the cash flow statements. 
but you can also go into fund graphs and look at important valuation ratios like we've been looking at today and other you know, financial information. You can go into fiscal fitness. One of the things that fiscal fitness shows is that a part of the reason for the stock price is that recently returns on equity have turned negative. A lot of that has to do with divesting and the charge-offs and everything um, and the fact that what they're doing with their equity. But you can also examine the stock much more deeply, utilizing the you know the many benefits that the FastGrass Fundamental Analyzer software tool provides you. Bottom line is we think stocks like Fidelity National, Global Payments, even the growthier stocks like Fleet Corps International are very, very attractive right now. We think this transaction and payment processing industry is going through a out of favor situation that's more industry related than it is company specific. Because I wanted you to notice that most of the stocks in this industry have fallen. So it would be, it looks to us like a great opportunity. And if you're looking for dividend or dividend income, companies like Fidelity National or global payments look like a very attractive, you know, situations with, you know, more dividend from Fidelity, less dividend from global payments, but perhaps more growth going forward with a company like global payments, significantly more growth actually than that. And so, you know, it really comes down to what your investment goals and objectives are and, you know, what you should be investing in. But I think this is an industry that you should be looking at. Now, we're going to do another video in this industry and related industries. We're going to look at some of the more overvalued stocks that operate in this subsector, companies like Visa and MasterCard. And we're going to look at the ones that have, they've had some correction, but they haven't corrected to the extent that the ones that we have in this video. So we'll be covering that in the next video. Visa and MasterCard will be going through the financial statements for you. But anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGrass, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. Hope you enjoyed this video where we took a look at the transaction and payment processing subsector um, and some of the more prominent companies in that industry. There's a lot of value in this industry. And so there's some stocks that, depending on your goal, if it's income, there are some for you. If there's growth, there are also some for you there. If you like this video, give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and also take a look at FastGrass. And don't forget to follow the link to the article that was co-produced by James Long and myself. You'll find the link at the bottom of this video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again real soon.